Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, for the last few days, I've been hitting Nathan Oakley and Quantum Racer rather hard. I've so utterly destroyed their position that right now, all I'm really doing is making the rubble bounce. Today, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to introduce the concept of the flat Earth distance between two locations versus the globe distance. But once again, the flat Earth has come through for me. It's the gift that keeps on giving. And I've got this video right here from Flat Earth Banjo, and he's talking about the true distance and width of Australia proving the flat Earth. So let's cue up the music and have a quick look at Flat Earth Banjo and see where he went wrong. Well, folks, today I'm going to give you a twofer. I'm going to introduce this concept of flat Earth distance versus globe distance, and I'm going to take a moment and show you how to properly evaluate a flat Earth video. Now, there is a claim in this video that the voyage of the HMS Challenger proved the flat Earth back in 1872 or whenever it was. Now, what I would like to do today is I would like to look at the positive claims that are being made by Banjo and show where he went off the rails and where he made his mistakes so that when you evaluate something like this, you can look at it with a critical eye as well. So let's have a listen to Flat Earth Banjo. The real size of Australia. Her Majesty's Ship Challenger. The distance from the Cape of the Good Hope in South Africa to Melbourne is 7,637 nautical miles. This is the actual route to 60 degrees south latitude. Cape of Good Hope to Melbourne, 36 degrees middle latitude. 7,637 nautical miles. Excellent concordance to rum line track at 36 degrees south latitude. You don't live on a ball. The cruise of Her Majesty's ship Challenger, Circumnavigation of the South. The Challenger Expedition of 1872 to 1876 was a scientific voyage around the world of considerable significance in the scientific exploration of the South Pacific. Over 100 specialists from all fields were assembled to produce a rich body of data. Actual sailing distances prove 1. Longitude diverges south of the equator. 2. Equator smaller than the purely theoretical unverified claim of 24,901 statute miles. Well, let's go ahead and just take a quick look at these two claims that he's made. First of all, he claims that longitude diverges south of the equator. That would mean that a distance between two lines of longitude at the equator would be less than two lines of longitude at, say, 36 degrees south latitude. We can test that. Plus, he's also making the claim, without any substantiation, that the equator is smaller than 24,901 miles. I don't see any evidence that he's going to present for this, but we'll give him a chance. Second of all, that's not a theoretical distance. That's a measured distance. We can measure distances across the land on the equator and find out precisely how long one degree of latitude is at the equator. You'll find that it's 60 nautical miles. From the ship log Her Majesty's Ship Challenger. Distance made good from Cape of Good Hope to Melbourne is 7,637 nautical miles. Mm. 
Melbourne stands at 37.81 degrees south latitude and 144.96 degrees east longitude. Cape of Good Hope stands at 34.35 degrees south latitude and 18.47 degrees east longitude. Middle latitude 36 degrees. The angle between is 126.5 degrees. 7,637 nautical miles, divided by 126.5 degrees equal to 60.37. That means 60.37 nautical miles to the degree at 36 degrees south latitude. Okay, so now we have some numbers from Flat Earth Banjo. Here is the location of Melbourne. Here is the location of the Cape of Good Hope. You'll notice that the latitudes are negative because they're in the southern hemisphere, and the longitudes are positive because they're in the eastern hemisphere. That's the convention. Now, the distance between those points in latitude is 3.4768 degrees. The distance between them in longitude is 126.849 degrees. Now, we're going to use the numbers that he wrote down because he then went on to talk about the 36 south latitude. But we're going to use the actual numbers that he provided because we want to get accurate results. He claimed that that distance, according to the logs of the Challenger, was 7637. Now, when you put that into a latitude-longitude distance calculator between these two points, you come up with a distance of 5544 nautical miles. Well, what's the discrepancy? The discrepancy is that he didn't go straight from point A to point B. He went down to the 60th latitude. So. We're going to cut him a little bit of a break here because that was a rather amateurish mistake. Let's agree that the globe distance will be somewhere between the great circle distance and this distance. If the actual distance on a flat Earth is significantly more than that, that would rule out the flat Earth. If it's between these two numbers here, we're going to say that it's non conclusive. It could be flat. I think that's fair. So let's go ahead and figure out how we're going to calculate the flat Earth distance between these two points right here. Now, on a flat Earth, all distances by definition can be calculated by a triangle on a flat plane. Here's our triangle we have the North Pole, we have the Cape of Good Hope, and we have Melbourne. The sum of all of these internal angles is 180 degrees because the triangle is flat, just like it is on the whiteboard here. Now, what do we know? Well, at the North Pole, we know this angle between the longitude of those two points is 126.489 degrees. So we'll put that up there. So there's absolutely no question about that. We know the coordinates for Melbourne are 37.8136 degrees south. So what's the distance between Melbourne and the North Pole? Well, it's 90 plus 37.8136. So let's go ahead and put that in. That'll be 127. That'll be 127.8136 degrees of latitude. How about the Cape of Good Hope? Well, it's 34.3568 degrees south of the equator, so we add 90 to it, and we get 124.3568. So now what we're faced with is we're faced with a triangle where we know the length of two sides and we know the angle between them. If we knew the length of this side and that angle, we could use the law of sines to figure out the rest of the triangle. We don't have that, so we have to use something called the law of cosines. Well, I went ahead and I took down that information and I just transferred it over here. Here's the, here's the calculated globe distance. Here's the stated distance. Here's our triangle. As far as the rest of this stuff with the coordinates, well, you should have written that down when it was up. If not, go back and look at it again. Now, let's go ahead and look at solving a triangle. 
We know the Pythagorean theorem is this, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And let's just go ahead and call that a, b, and c. Now, if that's the case, this would be angle c, big C. This works fine if you're dealing with a right angle. However, our angle is 126.489 degrees. We need to modify this a little bit using something called the law of cosines. And the law of cosines says c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. And that will give you your side c squared. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Now you can read these right off the triangle with me. Here's the original formula, and let's plug our numbers in. So c squared equals 124.3568 from right here. That's a squared. Plus 127.8136 squared, which is side b, minus 2 times 124.3568 from here, times 127.8136 from there, times the cosine of angle c. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, so right here what I did was I just put the numbers in and I did the math because you don't really need to see me do the arithmetic. Please feel free to double check my math though. In science, we like having other people check us to confirm our results. If I have an error up here, I'd like to hear about it. But that's how we handle our mistakes. We want to learn from them. We don't just make memes and call people names and double down on our stupidity. That's more the flat earth way. So let's have a look and see what we have here. Now, what I did was I just put the total for these two terms right here in red. Then I put the total for this term down here in red. Now notice, because this cosine is greater than 90 degrees, we have a negative number there. Now because we're subtracting two times this, if this is a negative number and we're subtracting it, it adds to the effect of adding the two numbers. Now when you do that and you get the square root, you find that the distance is 225.18 degrees. You multiply that by 60 nautical miles, that's the distance from here to here on the flat earth, 13,510 miles. So why did flat earth banjo get it wrong? Well, he was on to something, but he didn't understand what he was doing. And as a result, he made some more rookie mistakes. Now he did identify this, two parts of the navigation triangle. So rather than actually finish his work here and calculate this side of the triangle, he just put in the stated distance from the voyage, which I might add, was over a globe. So it's a globe distance. You have to calculate that using this formula yourself. So what he did was he simply made a mistake. He got lazy there because he didn't understand what he was doing and didn't realize why you couldn't put this number into here. That's not the way you calculate the sides of a triangle. You have to actually do the math. The other way that you can confirm this is you look at the times. How fast did the ship sail? What were the daily logs? If you want to do the work and find out whether or not somehow this number could have been fudged to that number, well, have at it. But barring that, we're going to take the reported number. And the reported number means that the Earth is a sphere. So in the future, when you're dealing with flat earthers and they start throwing distances out, like the black swan at 9.41 miles, that's a globe distance. Go ahead and calculate that flat earth distance for me. Tell me what the flat earth distance is between Los Angeles and JFK in New York. How long did that plane take? How fast can a plane go? Can a cruise ship make 41 knots? These are all things that just absolutely rule out the possibility of a flat earth. And you now have the math to do it. So have at them, guys. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thanks again for stopping by. This has been a lot of fun. Flat Earth Banjo, thank you again for providing me with the evidence that I needed to refute your claim. Thank you very much to the voyage of the HMS Challenger for proving that the Earth is indeed a globe. Now there's a couple of other examples that he put up. Go ahead and work through them. See if he makes the same error consistently. I think you'll find that he does. Then look for his evidence that somehow the size of the equator is misrepresented. Then look at two cities in Africa near the equator. What's the distance between those cities? How many degrees of longitude are they? 
can you figure out what the actual circumference of the Earth at the equator would be from that information? Yes, you can. So now you've got some homework. Thank you very much for dropping by. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Stay safe and stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon.